Next, let's take a look at the definition of reasonable accommodation. Under the law, a reasonable accommodation is a reasonable modification or adjustment to the workplace that enables the disabled employee to perform, you got it, the essential functions of the job. To be clear, the law does not force a company to excuse the disabled employee from doing the essential functions. The law requires modification of how or when an employee does the essential functions, but it does not eliminate them altogether. Next, let's analyze some examples of what I mean by this. Let's give some examples of reasonable accommodations. There are really an infinite number of possibilities. Reasonable accommodations can include things like job restructuring, part-time or modified work schedules, a temporary stint or working from home, uh, or reassignment to a vacant position. Accommodations could also include things like buying tools or modifying equipment to allow the disabled worker to do the job. It could be something as simple as a stool for you to sit on, or a mat for you to stand on, or a piece of software that assists you in getting the job done more quickly. It could also be an adjustment or modification to training materials or policies, or it could provide the employee with qualified readers or interpreters. A leave of absence from work can be a reasonable accommodation. This could mean letting you take some time off of work, even though you don't qualify for vacation, sick leave, or FMLA. We will talk a lot more about the interaction of FMLA, the Family Medical Leave Act, and reasonable accommodations in the next video in the series. I strongly recommend that you watch that video as soon as you finish this one. Well, okay, Brandigan, what is reasonable? If you break your leg at work, would it be reasonable for you to request that your employer allow you to work on the first floor of the building rather than the third floor for a few months while you heal up? Yeah, that would probably be reasonable to demand uh, that your employer, well, actually, let's put it this way. What if you demanded that your employer build an elevator to get you to the third floor? Would that be reasonable? Probably not. That would probably pose an undue hardship on the employer. Here's another hypothetical. What if you have a medical issue and you request to take six months off of work? That is twice as long as the three months permitted under FMLA. Is that reasonable? It might be, but it also might not be. Ultimately, whether something is reasonable or not is a jury question, and it is decided on a case-by-case -case basis. What poses as an undue hardship for one employer might not for another employer. Whoever the fact finder is in your case, whether it is a jury, a judge, or an arbitrator, they are going to decide if your requested accommodation is reasonable or not. The best way to know it with any kind of certainty if your requested accommodation is reasonable is to pick up the phone and call an experienced lawyer in your state. The short clip you just watched was taken from my complete video called When Must HR Accommodate You? If this information was applicable to you, I strongly recommend that you watch the original video in full to gain a complete understanding of my meaning and context. There's a link in the description and a legal disclaimer at the end. As you probably know by now, I'm a California lawyer. If you worked in California and you got fired from your job and you think something unlawful happened, don't be afraid to give my office a call for a free consultation. Thank you for watching.